Everyone, and my name is Misty Gaither, and welcome to Quest, a journey into true crime and the paranormal. I am so excited to have with me my guest this evening, uh, Greg Nicholas. He is a psychic medium and also an author and well-known, and I'm so honored and excited to have you on my show. How you doing? I am well. Thank you uh, for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, you're a fourth generation on your maternal side of being a psychic medium. And for those of you who I'm sure that you already know this, but there may be some people who do not know, you know, how that that uh, gift is passed down through the lineage. And so wow. for four generations that you've had your grandmothers teach you or, or mentor you mm-hmm. and even maybe their spirits to kind of help you along the way. So how did you know personally that you had the gift? I am fourth generation. We trace it to my great grandmother. Uh, she came over from Italy in 1919 and settled in Pennsylvania where I'm originally from. And the ability went from her to my grandmother to my mother to me. Now, it does end with me. Um, My wife and I do not have children, and basically everyone is gone. I have buried uh, 34. For me, it started at age four. I was, oddly enough, at a funeral with my uh, mother, and it was her aunt, my great aunt, whose uh, funeral it was. And I uh, remember saying to mom, I said, her name was Louise. I said, Louise is here. And mom said, yeah, you know, laying there, meaning in the casket. And I said, no, she's in the corner. And mom said, well, we'll talk later. And that's how it started. My mother and her family uh, groomed me. Uh, just for the record, uh, I raise a few eyebrows here. Uh, my family and I are very strict, Misty, Italian Catholic. I do not do dark, okay? Uh, only in the light. Uh, my uh, messages are more, uh, oh, messages of comfort, things like that. Uh, I Both the psychic medium, to me, psychic is use of the cards and the tools for future to help whoever I'm talking to with guidance, directions, decisions, something like that. Medium is strictly spirit work because, as you know, not all psychics are mediums. That mm-hmm. is very true. Now, one thing that I think is um, unique is you do not use just the cards. Now, you use playing cards, but you've also used dominoes and, uh, let's see, s- seashells. Now tell, now, tell me, yep. I, I kind of want to know, especially about the uh, seashells, hard for me to say it, and I'm not going to say that, you know, the <laughs> sales, right. seashells by the shore or whatever, because <laughs> uh, I'd mess it up for real. But how do you get the information from the seashells? I've been using the shells, golly, 20 years, easy. Shells come from the water. They're tied closely tied to our emotions. Each shell, the 26 or 27 shells I have in a box, actually, I keep them in my mother's jewelry box, to be honest with you. You pull six, and they tell a story, and then we build from there. Um, And I am always adding to them. None of the shells are store-bought. It's not a set that you buy online or anything. They are collected. I have uh, had them since I've been a child, and I add to them, so I use those. Dominoes, Misty, uh, have been around for centuries. Uh, the Chinese first invented tr- dominoes for fortune telling, and then they evolved into a game. Oh, okay. So well, during so I didn't know that. the psychic reading, I can use the dominoes, the seashells. I use a variety of oracle cards along with playing cards as well. Each thing would stand like, like it would normally do uh, for tarot or anything like that. It mm-hmm. would like mm-hmm. like you have a, what is that, snake eyes or whatever is on the dominoes. <laughs> and, yes. And that would stand mm-hmm. for... I don't know, but you may, uh, and you pull the shells. I do not. Okay. You pull them. And, uh, one may be, uh, time for a decision. Uh, another one, a path. Another one may be to treat yourself being overwhelmed, watch for deception. And we go from there. And now I, when I do a psychic reading, I use a little bit of everything. You may start with the shells or the dominoes, and mm-hmm. then we go into the Oracle cards and the playing cards. I and find that I intriguing. also use a, uh, I use a pendulum as well. Okay. Well, I think that is so cool, you know, because, you know, you go and it's, it's basically, you know, and I'm not trying to take away from anybody's abilities or anything like that, but normally it's the same thing, you know, like you have the cards or, or you know, and so I, I, that just kind of intrigued me that it was mm-hmm. something different. You, you wrote a book called Old World Psychic Medium. Okay, mm-hmm. which is available on Amazon. When you first started doing this, 
I guess, professionally. Do you see the acceptance or the popularity of this genre getting better, or is it really hadn't changed that much since you started? It is getting better. The book was written about me, Misty. I did not write it. Oh, okay. Um, oh, apologies. It took yeah. her. She approached me. I can write a check. And that's about it. Okay. Okay. The author uh, approached me. It took mm-hmm. her two years to write it. And it is about growing up, the things that happened, some of the funnier stories. A couple of things. First of all, Gregory Nicholas, that is not my real name. Okay. It's just for security. Uh, on that Facebook page, Gregory Nicholas, you will see my face. You will never see anything personal. You will mm-hmm. not see my wife or anything like that. Just because some people still are not very um, accepting, sure. critical, things mm-hmm. like that, depending on where we go. You know, I have been called the devil, Misty. I've been called the son of Satan, things like that. Now, okay? does that have to do with the Catholic, um, like more of the, the Catholic or just anybody that has an opinion? It's not related to gender, age, anything like that. A lot of times, Misty, in the more, now I'm in Ohio, okay, the more rural areas, they're more, they're less accepting. How's that? But more and more, uh, I get more and more uh, questions for men who want to read me. I read all over the country. I have clients internationally as well. And it is, I see it becoming more and more accepting. And believe it or not, I have some people who are ministers in whatever denomination who have contacted me. Oh, wow. Because, you know, you think about it, if you want to go like um, to the rabbit hole of the religion expert, aspect yeah. and i mean they had witches in the bible and when you think about the, the witch of indoor yes. and um mm-hmm. you know yeah. just different different ones like that and that that even uh who was that samuel that consulted her and and mm-hmm. it's like it, it was going on back then you know things are mystical and i think people are just kind of scared or are of what they don't understand or something that they can't control and so they you know they don't know how to to communicate about it or, or how to react to it. So they just kind of maybe do it negatively instead of mm-hmm. uh, maybe researching on their own to find out about someone or, or about the gifts. Valid point, Misty. Very, very accurate. Uh, it's the fear of the unknown. And a lot of what we see and you know uh, is generated by media, movies, things like that. The fear. You know, we are not, con- at least me, let me put it that way, not conjuring anything. Right. Okay. We're not conjuring minor more messages. Uh, You don't come to me and we're going to bring up whatever from the underworld. And Misty, to your point, the Bible. Okay. And I have mentioned this to um, a few select people. The three kings were told to go back to their own country in a dream. Right. Herod was going to kill them. Yeah. 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 In those days, it was mystics. Okay. So, yeah, to your point, it's been going on over the centuries. You know, look at Nostradamus and the quatrains. Yeah, it's been going on. You can look at different religions, but you're always going to have the people who are judging and whatever. And um, how shall I say this, Misty? Throwing the first stone. I, I find that that most, um, not every, but most psychics and mediums, they, they try to come from a place of goodness. You know, mm-hmm. a, a place from your heart to actually help people and to, you know, it kind of sounds kind of cliche or syrupy whatever but to make a world a better place and and to me defining when you're a medium as you know you're bridging the gap you're the bridge between the living and the dead and it's just amazing how you know some people don't get that or they don't realize that it is in fact a gift and it's to be shared yeah. and again uh, a lot of what we do is an education you know whenever i meet clients for the first time i tell them you know this is what i do i do not do dark um, it's an education. If you, during the process, the reading, you wish to stop, say stop. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Right. You know, I, my goal is to not to scare right. or to make uncomfortable. I want it to come from healing. I had um, a couple of readings today uh, from um, actually Louisiana, one of them was. And it was someone who's, without mentioning names, the lady lost two sons within a week due to suicide. They both took their own lives. Oh, wow. Whoa. And they both came through. Uh, with very specifics. So it, uh, it it's a place of healing, comfort. Um, are we always going to have the criticism? Yes, but most things in life we do. You're all right about that because sometimes it doesn't matter what you do or what you give or how you present. I mean, there will always be someone there to try to 
destroy or to hurt or just to be negative. And so, you know, I really think that that's really cool that you recognize that and you just go on with, you know, you, you use things to protect, like you said, your wife, yourself, mm-hmm. you know, by not. And, and it's so sad that, that the, sometimes you have to, to do that with the yeah. world being the way it is, but you have people that, you know, that want to stalk or wanted to, um, you know, not respect boundaries or just, you know, you know, you know, and it's, it's like you have gifts, but you're still human. You have to, people sometimes don't get that. And yeah. And And so one thing I'm seeing Misty to your point as well, and I'm not sure if this is all over, maybe regional lately from the psychic side of things, many of my clients, not all, but many are afraid to make a decision. Well, should I do this or that? Well, you have free will. Right. Should I go to the store? This is a true story. One lady, should I go to the grocery store? Well, are you hungry? You know, do you need to? Right. right. Another one, should I buy a car? Well, can you afford it? What do you want? You know, I we are not here to make decisions mm-hmm. for you. Right. I, I found out a lot of times too, and a lot of my peers that I've spoken to, Misty. People do that. They want someone to blame. They may be afraid to take their own responsibility. I think that really sums it up because, you know, you're right by some of the questions that you do get sometimes. And it's like, why are you asking me this? But it could be, like you said, maybe to find someone to blame because we, unfortunately, as a country, we have that problem with taking responsibilities for our own actions. You know, Very true. Yeah. And one thing I see now, I have been doing, I am just so you know, full disclosure, I'm 62. I started at age four. I have been doing this professionally over 20 years. The older people, you know, we've been around the block a few times, have the experience. And many times, and I'm sure you have seen this as well, you have some people who are new to the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, they you cannot watch a 15-minute video or something and know what you're doing. Correct. You yeah. have to work your way up through the ranks. And a lot of what we do is experience and stuff like that. And let's face it, a lot of times we have to give some rather unpleasant messages, especially from the mediumship side where someone is angry, upset, but you have to learn how to finesse that. Yeah, I totally uh, believe in that. I also wanted to ask you, um, I was a guest on a podcast, I think it was last week, and I brought up the subject. As a psychic medium, I don't believe that everyone is 100% right. Correct. And, and they yep. kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And he's like, you will say that? And I'm like, yeah, I will say that. Because if someone is 100% right on every single thing, then there's a question in my mind about that person because I'm just like, you have to think, okay, you're a psychic medium, but you're, like I said, you're also human. And maybe the time for the message isn't right then. And I always say, mm-hmm. well, just put it on a shelf and then they'll come back to me. Oh, I remember Aunt Ethel, you were right. Yeah. You know, r- r- yeah. and that's fine. And it's not so much about being right. It's about, to me, it's important about getting the correct message to whom it's supposed yeah. to go to, to relay it both ways. And so I just wanted to know if you felt that same way or maybe mm-hmm. I'm just crazy no, By saying no. that, Misty, and to your point, as a medium, okay, we can only relay what spirit wants us to. Again, when I tell people, see, hear, feel, smell, even dream, messages from spirit, okay, we can only tell tell you what we hear. If spirit isn't ready to communicate, we can't make them. Oh, yeah. You know, no, I agree with you. We can only relay what is told to us. And I like, I really like what you said, Misty, about putting it on the shelf. And it's true because when you're given a reading or having a reading, your mind, you know, you're wondering if your grandma's going to show up, your aunt, your uncle, your, you know, whomever it is. And, you know, you're so preoccupied. Some people get nervous having a reading because they're kind of nervous about the message that may or may not come across. And and so, Mm -hmm. you know, their mind's spinning around and then you're given the message. And like I said, it's like, no, no, I don't know anybody named Ethel. You know, or and I'm like, right. okay, that's fine, because you don't want to argue with someone. But I always say, you know, right. just put it on a shelf. And, and nine times out of ten, you know, they'll call back. You know, they'll come back. Oh, yeah, yes. I remember, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, and the reputation of a psychic medium to me is everything. Yes. It's not just about the accuracy, which is high. I mean, you, you have to mm-hmm. be as accurate as what you can. But, you know, just just your persona how you conduct yourself professionally 
and how that mm-hmm. you treat the spirits and how you relay the messages is, is is so important. And so I know that you do a very wonderful job at doing that. But Misty, what you said to your point, we have to be approachable. Yes. Okay. Yes. And not, what's the right word here? Not be condescending or talk down to our clients. You know, they're there to us 95, 98% of the time for healing, to hear messages, comfort, whatever. We have to be able to relate to that human and talk to them, not at, Yeah. you know, and I believe in that too. Um, You know, too many times, uh, and I try not to be the uh, showman, you know, the gimmick, the costumes, the things like that. You know what I'm saying? I always tell, sometimes I'll say, well, you know, I'm not Teresa Caputo. I don't have the hair, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but I'll do the best I can. The way that psychics meet and mediums are portrayed on TV, like you said, are, are, yeah. can be a positive or a negative for all of us. And, and so that, that goes a long ways. And, and for, you know, I just, but like I get back to the point of personal responsibilities, it's also up to us to, mm-hmm. to maintain an example too. And to your point, and you know, some people, and I'm sure you know uh, people as well, they just want to get readings every day, every week, sure. whatever. I don't really go for that too. I've told people no, but They'll come to me for a reading. They'll come to you. Mm-hmm. Well, and they may say to me, well, Misty said this, this, and this about so-and-so. Well, I'm sorry, but they're not coming through for me now, but I have this person. Mm-hmm. We're not all going to be the same. Do you know what I mean? And we we each have our own um, interpretations of signs. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I've mentioned to people before how that when you're having, when the spirit is communicating with you, it's not going to be, oh, hi, Misty, I was, you know, this person's grandmother, and I died back in 1944, and, you know, I had a friend, and their favorite color was, you know, they're not going to have a long, drawn-out conversation right. with you. They give tidbits, they give clues, they give, like, short answers, and it is up to us to interpret what's going on yeah. and, and give the mm-hmm. messages. And so I, th- I think that, like you said, education is so important. You know, for the process, for it to go smoothly for the person seeking a reading and for the medium. And Misty, we all have different ways of doing it. You know, your strong suit may be hearing, mine may be visual, Mm -hmm. another may be feeling. We are not all going to pick up on the same thing. And again, a lot of what we do is an education process, explaining to people. We have to explain. Uh, you may be very good with names. Names are not my strong suit at all. For me to get one or two names right a month, I'm thrilled. I'm over the moon. <laughs> yeah. You know, you may be good with that. I, I tend to pick up, believe it or not, on a lot of various smells and fragrances. See, I'm just the you opposite. Know? Yeah. And it's just everybody has their yeah. own way. And it's not that either a way is right or wrong. It's just work what yeah. best for you. There was an art. It was either an article or it was a video. I'm not, I apologize. I, I, I don't know the the difference in, in where that I've found this, but I've always been um, interested in, but I've never done it. I've never done it, but I really want to scrying. Oh, do I, you do I that a lot, it. or or or? Oh, um, I teach. You yes, teach ma'am. Oh, wow. I've me. been doing it for years. I do it in almost all my sessions, Misty. Oh wow! So for those of you who do not know what scrying is, um, Greg, do you mind just telling? Scrying have been around for centuries. Um, Back in ancient Egypt, the uh, generals used to use the back of their high polished shield to look into it. The oh. theory was they could tell how their troops were doing in battle. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. a lot of the oh from Central America. I'm not sure if it was Aztecs or Incas. I'm not sure would use a bowl of human blood. Now, I'm not recommending doing that. Uh, yeah, let's skip that one. No. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't do that. But to scry into it. All right, Misty, here you go. What very famous movie that we all have seen mm-hmm. has multiple t- examples of scrying in it? Give me a hint. Just a little Wizard hint. of Oz. The Wizard of... Yes, you're right. And I love I love that movie. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Dorothy yeah. runs away. Mm-hmm. Uh, she goes to the... Um, the covered wagon, Professor yes, Marvel, yes. puts on the, the turban and the crystal, and mm-hmm. he sees Anne M scrying. D- later in the same that. movie, Misty. Right. But yeah, later on, they are running through the field of poppies, and the Wicked Witch is looking in the green ball. Yes, that makes yes. sense. Scrying. Okay, another very famous, what is the most famous saying for scrying in the world? You tell me. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Boom, Snow White. 
Okay. Yeah. I when I teach, I use the black mirror. Mm -hmm. The crystal ball is what everyone is interested in, but it is very difficult because it is concave mm -hmm. and it picks up reflections and uh, images, you know, from uh, different things in the room. Uh, the black mirror. I teach how to use, believe it or not, incense smoke. Misty, have you ever been looking at a bonfire or anything and watch the shapes that may appear? I have, and I didn't know until like a while ago that 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 you could scry with fire. Oh, and I, smoke! If you yeah. throw uh, like sage into it, smoke, incense. If you get the right burner, I like to use a pyramid. Mm -hmm. The smoke comes out, and watch it change. How many times have you looked at the clouds and saw images? Scrying. Or scrying. We are all doing it, but don't realize it. Now, have you ever yeah. been to, uh, I believe it's called Victoria's Black Swan Inn in around San Antonio, Texas? No, I haven't. She is very into scrying. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of the word that you call, like the room that you use when you scry. It's a, not chrysanthemum, but it's kind of uh, like. Uh, is it, I'm going to use this term, necromancy, uh, necro something with an N. I'm not, I don't know. Some people, it has to be a black room. I, okay. I think I know what you mean. Yeah. I do not. Some people get afraid. Mine is just a simple mirror off to the side. Nothing and fancy. <laughs> oh, no. Misty, you can use the back of your cell phone. Okay? Okay. It's a high polish. I have people who will do that to focus into it. See, I'm going to be busy think when I go it. home. Yeah, I'm going to be crying Yeah, you can use a blank iPad. Think about know. it. What do you need to know? But uh, with scrying... Misty, it's not only for, for the future. Okay, what do I need to know? Focus, what was my past life? You know, you may also see it focusing into the center of the mirror, Misty, but are you going to get it in your mind's eye as well? Now, when you scry, are you opening the process? Are you opening up yourself to whatever comes through? Or do you, do you control that? I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, I've never done it before. So I'm just asking simple questions, you know, oh, that, sure. that, you no, know, but valid question, yeah. Misty, valid and very important question before I do scrying or any work, mm -hmm. any, I am protected. Now for me, there's my divine golden white light bubble. I'm protected. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or Misty armor up gentlemen, we're King Arthur ladies, you're Joan of Arc with your shiny armor for uh, that way, no harm, evil, or negativity comes through for me. Protection is key, right? Uh, you're protected. We don't want anything dark to come in. We don't want to pick it up. I, I do a lot of protection and sometimes people say I'm uh, protect too much. Well, I'm sorry, but we all know the dark and evil exists out there and I do not want it attaching or coming through to you. Right. Oh no. Cause it's nothing nice to have an yeah. attachment or something. Yeah. Crying Misty. You can do it. Make your own mirror. I prefer, mm -hmm. I tell people to make it you, Misty, you get a picture frame. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take out the glass, spray paint it with uh, about three layers of black paint. Let it dry, put it back in. My wife actually makes the majority of them. I'm a Reiki master for years. Oh, okay. I will Reiki them for the good energy. And when I teach, they're the mirrors, but you uh, you better believe they are cleansed afterwards. I think it's, like I said, fascinating about the dominoes and the playing cards mm -hmm. and the seashells and you do the scrying. I do a lot of, believe it or not, tea leaf readings. Okay. I hadn't done that either. Uh, now, again, building on the scrying, Misty, when you do the tea leaf readings, okay, you have the, the loose tea, the, the sitter drinks it, you know, and you have, uh, you do the process, swirl it. You're looking at the images. You're still scrying. What, or whether it's tea leaves or the uh, coffee grounds, you're looking at it, right? right? There you go. You're still scrying. You can be looking out um, in your lawn or something and see an image, an initial. That could be grandma saying hello. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. The sky. I mean, how many times are you driving along? You look up and there's an image. You may see, oh, shoot, um, Mickey Mouse, you know, or Bunny. Um, I also teach, Misty, how to see auras. Now you know, that's, yeah. the energy around everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, the auras, I know that there's photography. Your auras, Misty, change second by second, okay? I could be looking at you, and you're nice and, to me, pink and sky blue, calm, happy. I could say something to irritate the heck out of you, and you go fire red or orange. Mm -hmm. So they change. And you can see them, Misty, with your eyes open mm -hmm. or your eyes shut. 
One thing, Misty, for you, have you ever been driving along um, spring, summer day, and you're relaxed, and you're you're just driving along, and you look above the tree line, and you see the white haze or the mist? Yeah. That's the energy field. Oh, okay. Focus on any living thing. A house plant. Do you have pets? Oh, yeah. If that pet is calm, sleeping, soft focus on them. Don't stare. Okay. You'll, you'll hurt your uh, third eye. Soft focus. You know, you're breathing deep. You're relaxed. No music, nothing. Mm -hmm. You may start to see their energy field. I'm going to try that tonight. Yeah, I teach all that. Well, see, I'm just really. And I use it, Misty. Yeah. I use it every day. When you're doing a reading and I see the person's aura, you can tell, I'll be real honest, if they're lying. Or are they there just to try and trip you up? How many times during readings people sit there? Oh, yeah. I dare you. Yeah. No. No, no. We don't do that. But it's you know. fun, Misty. Um, I, I use all of it. Uh, like I said, during my readings, and a lot depends on what the, the, uh, the customer or the client wants. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I mean, because not everybody may be into scrying or maybe not be yeah. into auras. And so it's whatever, like you said, whatever that the client wants. But yeah, and I'm always doing something. Um, you know, I travel all over. Um, am I allowed to give a plug for an upcoming TV show? You most certainly can. <laughs> it, it will be on Amazon. Okay. And Paraflix. Oh, it is called yeah. Dark Echoes Paranormal. Yes. Uh, a couple episodes are out there. Mine are not yet. I did speak to the director today. Uh, I, I taped two, uh, one in March, one in May. Both times I did not know where we were going. My wife did. Oh, okay. She drove yeah. me and we show up and I do my thing. Now, they are still in the editing process. Right. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to be released. I'm really not. I will let you know there'll be a Facebook blast, but... Uh, Paraflix and uh, Amazon. I would love for you to come back and, and we can talk about, you know, what's oh, yeah. their show and stuff. And I believe that Natalie, who is the CEO at Paraflix, she's going to be at the Paracon yeah. too. Yeah. In fact, I met them. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mansfield or Ohio State Reformatory. Yes. It's, it's 45 minutes from here. Okay. I met them this year and they interviewed me. Nice. David did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Got a lot of good things coming up for you and, and I'm be so excited. And, and Brandon, he'll also, um, our producer director, he'll also be going to uh, the Paracon with us, but uh, I appreciate you being on the show and talking and oh. getting to know you better. And, and uh, like I said, I just can't wait to meet you in person and, and I think it'll be great. Thank you again so much for the opportunity. I am on Facebook at Gregory Nicholas. You will see my face. Um, and when I know I'm going to be at Mystic Path, you know, we will put it out there for readings and appointments. And uh, Misty, I really thank you again. And I really look forward to meeting you. Yeah, you too. You know what, everybody, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, uh, like, share the episodes. We're here every week. Um, we drop a new one. Um, and, you know, I appreciate everyone's support very much. And until next time, have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>